Hi, welcome to Distinti Definition video number two. Causal versus non-causal systems. In this video, we're going to explain the difference between a causal and a non-causal system, how to identify such systems, and why this is important to us. But first, the purpose of these definition videos is that they're foundational to all of the new videos coming up for ethereal mechanics, gravity, and for the final videos on the, or the coup de grace, quantum mechanics, and so on, and the rules of acquisition. So instead of having to take time to explain these definitions each and every time in each of the different videos, which would really just clutter them all up, what I'm going to do is have those newer videos refer to these definition videos so that you can watch them at your leisure. Um, and that way there we won't clutter up those other videos and that way there I'll have one definition for all three so there won't be like you know little variations in it okay these definitions will have their own place on the distinti.com website that place will be on the main link on the main bar rather and on the main page there will be a link to the page of definitions they're not there yet but they will be there soon shortly so what's a causal system a causal system is a system where one event is caused by another, aka, you've heard it before, cause and effect. For example, the extinction of the dinosaurs was caused by an asteroid impact. Now, maybe there's other little causals in there, like, you know, okay, well, the, the, the impact hit the Earth, created a fireball, created a winter, nuclear winter, and it's a nuclear winter that really killed the dinosaur, all the dinosaurs. Okay, so in other words, there might be a lot of smaller causalities in there, but the overall causality is the asteroid impact killed the dinosaurs. So what's a non-causal system? Well, the term non-causal gets a little confusing because it's used in two different ways under two different contexts. One is used to describe systems that are non-causal. And it's also used to describe events that are not causal. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. So let's go on to non-causal systems first. A non-causal system is would be something like the decay, radioactive decay, where we don't know what causes it. So at the very least, a non-causal system is something we that may be causal, we just don't know what the cause is. Or it could be a purely non-causal system, like you know, something just like quantum mechanics believes in things that are purely random that have no causality. I don't believe that, but that's at least what quantum grease monkeys think. So let's leave it at that. Okay. So in other words, a non-causal system is something that occurs for a non-deterministic reason. So it's either an event without a cause or an event with an unknown cause. So, and because these events are non-deterministic, Okay, we can't know what they are or they don't exist, one or the other. You take your pick. Another, another use of non-causal is in, in relationship of events, like non-causal events. So in, what are non-causal events? Well, if you have two events that kind of correlate, um, you could have events that correlate that are non-causal. Like, for example, you could say that, gee, I just sneezed. And the moment I sneeze, a volcano on the other side of the earth erupted. And this, this, believe it or not, things weird things like this happen. There's just wonderful coincidences that happen. And so you might get them to think that, gee, maybe my sneeze had some causal effect to the, to the volcano blowing up. Okay, and this is what is called, what would be called a post hoc fallacy. Okay, and things like this happen all the time. Okay, like for example, when I was working as a software and embedded software engineer many, many years ago, I made changes to the software build to put in new features that the customer wanted. And when I tried to tra try those features out, the whole system wouldn't work. And the boss came in and the boss was a little irritated that the whole system was no longer working. And so we went into the conference room, which is next door, where we're trying to figure this out. And the boss is getting irritated that this thing isn't working. And all I did was make some changes for some you know, so anyway, so I said, well, I want to go figure out why this is happening. I can't be anything I did because I'm just making changes to the format of the date pretty much is about the level extent of the changes. 
But the boss was like, no, 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 let's just roll everything back. You know, I don't want to think about it. It's pretty much what the boss said. Let's just roll everything back. I'm like, all right, fine. So I go back in the other room, and I roll back to the previous version of the code. And, and what do you know? Everything worked. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So then what I did, I made three changes. I rolled each change back in turn, and I, I got back to adding the third change in, and it still worked. And I said, well, maybe there was something weird with the particular build. So I went and got the build earlier build that had all the three changes in put that in still worked so finally comes what happened is the turns out it was nothing i did at the same time that i was testing my original build the hardware engineers were making changes to the fpga and uh, so they're the ones that really caused it when they heard us having our little disagreement in the other room they quickly went in and re-rolled back their changes so when i came back in everything i did worked so there's a lot of things that happen like that in engineering. It, it happens all the time. We have very complicated systems. You can have things that look like you fixed it by doing something and it had absolutely nothing to do with what you did. It could totally. So anyway, without belaboring that point, um, okay, there's a lot of post hoc fallacies out there. Okay, and causal systems are deterministic. So. Causality and determinism are, are highly related. Okay, because non-causal systems are indeterminate and are thus modeled with probability and statistics. Again, what we said in the first definition video, that if you do not have a causal deterministic system, you're at the mercy of using probability and statistics to try to determine a means of modeling. And this here is what is known as the decay graph for radioactive isotopes. Okay, given an amount of radioisotope, you can compute the half-life. And this is a statistical model. This is based on statistics. Okay, yeah, you can see there's a, there's, a, there's a differential equation model, but it's still based on the quantity of stuff remaining. So it's statistical at its very heart. Okay, and so causality has rules. When you're talking in terms of causality, and this is where causality is a little bit different than determinism, is causality has rules. And the first rule is the cause must lead. That means come before the effect in time. So what we have here is we have an incandescent light bulb. And this chart over here, the blue, that is the electricity going through the light bulb. So at this point here, we're turning the electricity on. And what happens is as the, inner, as the light bulb filament heats up, the amount of light given off is going to increase according to the orange chart here. And then it's going to reach a maximum saturation point. At the same time, the light bulb is going to get start is going to become warm. That's the red for temperature. But because there's a you know high heat density here, it's going to take a while for the glass on the outside to get warm. So that's going to be much more lagging of an effect. But you can see the cause which is the electricity going through the light bulb occurs first. And the light output and the heat output of the light bulb are a lagging effect. And that's what we say, the effects must lag the cause in time. At this point here, we turn the switch off, the electricity goes to zero. But because the filament is still boiling hot, it's gonna take time for it to cool off and the afterglow is gonna remain for a little while until it decays. Same with the temperature. The temperature of the light bulb, this light bulb is going to be, remain hot, probably too hot to touch for a long time after the luminous output decays. Okay, and so the effects cannot be narrower in time than the effect. So these, these effects are going to be wider in time than the original effect. Now, that's for linear systems. That's for linear systems. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you could have a nonlinear system which is kind of a little bit of a misnomer. But in other words, you could have a digital integrated circuit inside this bulb. This could be a Christmas tree bulb that's designed when you turn it on to start blinking. Okay, we're not talking about things, fancy things like that, which we would call a nonlinear system. This we're talking about a completely linear system here. Okay, so in a linear system, okay, the effects cannot be narrower in time than the effect, than the cause rather. So let's look at this in terms of Hey, this is the carbon dioxide of the measured of the earth with the temperature of the earth. The red is the temperature. Blue is the carbon dioxide. 
okay? Everywhere you see, except possibly this area here, and maybe some others, but the majority of cases, the temperature, which is red, is falling faster than the carbon dioxide. On these edges here where it's rising, they're both rising so quickly together, you can't tell which one's really rising first. But on the flip side, just like the light bulb, you have this thing where the effects lag the cause. Okay, so the question here, what really is the cause? This sayer here, this sayer says to me very, very concretely, except for this little area here, that it's the temperature of the earth that causes carbon dioxide, or could cause carbon dioxide. But it cannot be the other way around that the carbon dioxide causes the temperature because it's a lagging effect. It's clearly lagging effect by this. Now this, this graph was taken from skepticalscience.com. I'm pretty sure this is right because I've seen the one that the graphs that were published in February 2007, Scientific American, and the, I saw the same thing in those charts that I see here. Now this here, we can say, well, gee, this is the one of the few cases where the carbon dioxide is actually leading the temperature, but not really. Because if you look over here, the up the where it turns up, it looks very clearly that the temperature started up before the carbon dioxide started turning up. So it looks like this guy did lead this. And this is just might be something like, you know, maybe the a global forest fire happened and it caused a lot of carbon dioxide. Or, so this also says because we have effects like this, that there might be other effects we have to account for. Let's say maybe, maybe volcanic eruptions or other causes of carbon dioxide that could dump a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, like forest fires or, you know, volcanic effects, whatever. But the majority of the, the effects here show that the temperature is the leading effect to the carbon dioxide. So I leave that here for you to look at. I'm sure the climate scientists will get all upset about this. But hey, if you want to say, if you want to say that carbon dioxide causes the temperature, then you're incurring the rules of causality. Okay, so you have to follow the rules of causality or you're going to have to change them and get everybody to agree that the change that you're that you're proposing is valid. So again, this video is going to be the basis for the 14th rule of acquisition, the insanity tell, just like the previous video. And the 14th rule of acquisition and these videos are going to be part of the T12. These videos are also being used for are the basis for the Ethereal Mechanics New Gravity paper. So that's why I need to get these definitions out before I can release more chapters because we're going to go heavily into things of causality and determinism and all the other very the definitions that will be coming up. Thank you for watching. Please, uh, if you can, become a Patreon subscriber. I really appreciate my Patreon folks are helping um, tremendously with their feedback and with their donations to help me uh, offload work, like I'm getting people to mow my lawn and I'm hiring people to clean the house so I can focus what little free time I have more on Ethereum mechanics and getting this stuff done. And I, I really appreciate the patience of my Patreon folks. I have a lot of releases in the pipeline to get to you guys only, uh, but I need to get all this preliminary nonsense out first. Well, it's not nonsense, but it's necessary stuff that needs to be done. Thank you.